went out on a sortie and we had a dog fight with a, uh, one and nines and one nineties and some Mackies. So we had a, a real mix up. There was a huge, it was a huge dice. It was high. I think it was about, that was about 20,000 feet or somewhere. And of course in the dice, then you're using uh, power. And I think I had my uh, throttle through the gate because we had a, a, a gate on the throttle. The full throttle was up to the end of the travel of the, of the quadrant. And then there was a little gate and you could push it through there for not longer than, I think it was supposed to be a minute because that gave extra power. And uh, the engine blew up. I suddenly got a tremendous vibration uh, in the aircraft and uh, black smoke came pouring out of it and then and, and there were flames in the bottom of the cockpit and uh, that scared me because of the the Spitfire its its fuel tank is between the instrument panel and the engine it's right in front of the in instrument panel and it's a 90 gallon uh, fuel tank and it was probably half empty because I've been using it for flying. So it was volatile and uh, I didn't like that. And when I saw flames in the bottom of the cockpit, which were obviously coming from the engine, uh, and then the, and the engine vibrated and, and I saw the flames and I thought, no, I've got to get out of here. Just the day before, I think, I think it was the day before, a couple of days before, Wing Commander Kingcom from the Royal Air Force had visited us. And uh, he, they had been in, in the Battle of Britain. And he said they had developed a, a, a unique way of bailing out where there was the least disruption. You uh, loosened your straps, jettisoned the, the canopy, and uh, held the aircraft uh, level but trimmed forward, and then you let go the stick, which bunted the aircraft, and you shot out, and then the aircraft would drop away, and as you dropped, you could pull your parachute. So I, I did that, but I'd forgotten to jettison my canopy. That is very really important, because the canopy of the Spitfire is not flush with the backrest above the above your head, it forms a bit of a ledge. So as I went out, my parachute pack caught in this ledge. So and I trimmed the aircraft forward, so it's now now on a on a bunt on a on a dive. Di dive. Yeah. And then and it had gained speed rapidly. So here I was with my feet in the cockpit and my body outside. And I was, I was blown back onto the parallel with the fuse, fuselage and there my f feet were in the cockpit. And uh, I battled. I, I couldn't get up. I wanted to get up and to reverse the thing and get back in the cockpit and redo the whole exercise. But it was too strong, I couldn't do it. The, the, the aircraft had gained speed by then. I must have been doing probably 400 miles an hour. And um, I was pushed back on to flush with a fuselage. And uh, it came to the stage where, and I battled and I just couldn't anymore. I used, and, and they say when you're in desperate situation, you've got 10 times your, your own strength. And I'd used every bit of it. And so I actually I just relaxed and I thought, well, there's another statistic. And then suddenly uh, I got another sort of verb of, of, of uh, energy and I felt around in the cockpit and I found the stick. And I held it against my left foot and I kicked it with my right foot and it bunted the aircraft suddenly and I, and I flew free. And That's a close that was close. <laughs> yes. And uh, then after using all that energy, I was absolutely finished. So um, I just lay there and it was so comfortable, I tell you. I was floating down, lying in this rush of air. It was, it was like a feather bed. 
And then suddenly I realized, damn it, I've got to pull my chute. <laughs> so I fumbled around and I, I found the, the release yeah, and, I, yeah. and I, I pulled the chute and it opened with a huge bang and, uh, and a jerk. And, um, uh, and then I floated down. And uh, it wasn't uh, long after that. I looked in my diary and I, I wrote in there that it was from about 2,000 feet. But I had always thought it was much closer because the chute opened and it was almost immediately that I, my feet hit the water. So I went in there with my, my feet in and my, my chute then c collapsed. Fortunately, not over me, it was yeah. next to me. And uh, I pulled my dinghy out and, uh, and released it. Well, as you release it, it automatically has got a cylinder. It uh, blew, inflated. And I got into the dinghy and I, and I sat there. You were lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lucky one, yeah. yeah. And then, who, who, how did you get then this was, this was, um, this was in the Straits of Messina. And uh, there were barges and there was a lot of Royal Navy stuff going on there because that was the invasion. And uh, I paddled over to a, a landing craft and they hauled me aboard. And I spent the night aboard that landing craft. And uh, the next day they dropped me at the, on the mainland. Yeah. And I hitchhiked home. The Navy guys took my flying boots and they uh, it. yeah, <laughs> and well, they sort of said, "Now give me," and I was only too too, uh, too glad, yeah, glad yeah. to get. So I gave them my flying boots, and they gave me a pair of leather slippers. So uh, having been landed, I then hitchhiked back to yeah. back to the squadron, and I got back there at about half past three that afternoon. All my kit had been distributed. Already? Yeah. <laughs> I'd been written off. I, I, I was... Uh, I thought you were killed. Yeah. Or, or, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then you had to collect all your stuff. So I went around getting my stuff. <laughs>